Brittany. I'm Sam. And I'm Eloise. And we are the creators of the implementation plan, Classroom Architect. The implementation plan that we have proposed is based around the subject area, design and technology. Students develop their comprehension of design and technology through the understanding and knowledge, as well as the processes and production skills created by the Australian Curriculum, also known as ACARA. The implementation plan involves a class of Grade 2 students redesigning their current classroom. Students explore how a classroom is a functioning system and discuss how and why they are positioned in a particular way. Firstly, students draft their design using a bird's eye view perspective on grid paper and from here they develop a final copy using a website. The proposed implementation plan is broken up into six key stages of product development. Stage one is the investigation of the current classroom. The teacher holds a class discussion on what a system is and how that relates to a school classroom. The teacher uses higher order thinking questions to stimulate deep critical discussion. The students are prompted to justify why certain things are positioned in the classroom. This is done by the use of open-ended questions to deeper the student's understanding of the content. For example, the whiteboard is at the front of the classroom for all students to be able to see and the classroom needs to be set up in a way that is easily accessible and safe for all people. Class discussions are used in the stage to gauge prior knowledge and as a way of sharing and building on others' ideas. This stage of product development creates an initial engagement with real-world context as students can connect to their classroom and the design, which evidently can affect their learning. Stage 2 is where students develop an understanding of bird's eye view. The term bird's eye view is explicitly defined to all students, ensuring that students have a universal understanding of the word. The students are given an example of what a classroom might look like from this angle, catering to the visual learners and provides all students with an understanding. From there, the teacher holds a class discussion about why maps might be drawn this way and again uses open-ended questions to develop critical thinking. Students are asked to draw objects from a bird's eye view to further develop their understanding of this concept. Stage 3 is where the teacher uses the we do phase of the gradual release of responsibility and co-constructs the design of the current classroom. The students and teacher collaboratively use grid paper to form a bird's eye view perspective of the current classroom thus giving the students a deeper understanding of bird's eye view and scaffolds the assessment for all learners. The students are allowed this copy of the classroom through the following stages of the implementation plan. This stage gives the students the opportunity to practice drawing objects from a bird's eye view perspective, catering to all learners and more explicitly the lower learners of the class. Students are prompted through this stage to ask questions about the task. In stage four, the students begin the you do phase of the gradual release of responsibility and start to develop ideas for their new design of the current classroom. The students apply the knowledge previously developed in this unit to create their design. Using grid paper, the students work individually to plot their ideas. Resource 1, which is a co-constructed bird's eye view map of the current classroom, is given to students as a guide of what is expected of them and allows the students to grasp an idea of how big objects should be drawn. The students are also provided with a checklist of all the items that need to be included in their new design, including desks, chairs, computers, etc. Students must include all the items on the checklist. This stage allows for students who are struggling to accurately draw shapes to use pre-cut out pictures of classrooms, objects and glue onto their grid paper. 
Through this stage, the teacher will provide the students with formative feedback and prompt them with questions which, which gets the students to think more critically about their design. Stage 5 is where the students begin to create their final copy of their new current classroom design. After receiving formative feedback from the teacher on their drafted design, the students create their best work on the grid paper to complete their final physical copy. From their physical copy, the students use a website that generates a classroom digitally and allows students to place the correct amount of items onto the grid. The website is both is good for both kinesthetic and visual learners as they can see the finished product in a different real world format. The website is engaging and motivating for all learners, especially when the classroom is completed. In stage six, the last stage of the product development, the students are given an assessment evaluation sheet to evaluate their own design and their peers' design. Each student is required to evaluate two other classroom designs and give theirs peer critical feedback. The students indicate what they liked and disliked about the designs. They compare the old and new classroom designs and give ideas for improvement. The stage allows learners to assess their own knowledge and be able to improve their own future practices. Students use the evaluation sheets as a way of reflection. They critically consider their own and peers' design against the criteria. This enables students to recognise their own strengths and weaknesses. This unit plan has many strong points. The real-world contextualised content allows the students to personally connect with the topic and the design challenge. Students are posed with an authentic challenge that creates engagement and motivation. The unit plan, through many ways, integrates mathematics into the design technology subject and develops students' numeracy and literacy skills through open-ended questions with class discussion, visual representation to demonstrate their own designs, and working through evaluation sheets and checklists to understand how they could have improved for future studies. Within this implementation plan, all learners may not be catered for. For example, the kinesthetic learners, as they may struggle with the lack of hands-on activities, especially as they are not able to physically design their new classroom. We found this to be a major weakness within our plan. A kinesthetic learner may have really enjoyed and benefited from hands-on experiences such as being able to move the whiteboard and desks around to different positions within the classroom. As they are unable to do this in our plan, they may need additional help from other students, if available, a teacher aide or the classroom teacher. From this, other students may also benefit from being able to create a physical prototype of the design from materials such as recycled boxes or cardboard. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.